One of the most intriguing effects in card magic is that of the color changing cards. I'm going to show you a super simple yet clever and convincing trick that sees you change the color of the entire deck of cards. Stay tuned for the trick, the secret, and of course the usual inspiring message. Let's go. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Coach Trick, where magic meets inspiration. In today's tutorial, we're delving into the timeless and enchanting world of color changing cards, but with a twist. What sets this trick apart? Well, it's not just the dazzling effect, it's the simplicity behind the magic. In this self-working marvel, the entire deck undergoes a mesmerizing transformation right before the spectator's eyes. And it's a breeze to perform. As ever, we're not only delving into the mechanics of the trick, but also acknowledging the broader magic of learning magic itself. Magic isn't just about the tricks, it's a journey that builds essential life skills and confidence. So whether you're here for the magic, the inspiration, or both, this tutorial has something for you. Now, grab a deck and let's go. Okay, as ever, let's start off by taking a look at the effect itself. Now this is a simple but really intriguing effect that always gets a great reaction. And here's what it looks like. You're going to start off with an envelope. This envelope contains a card, a playing card. We'll come to that in just a moment. And also your deck of cards. And you're going to explain to the spectator why it's actually so difficult to cheat at a game of cards. And one of the reasons it's so difficult is because the cards are so difficult to change. And they're so difficult to change because of the special way that they're made with a special ink. We're going to illustrate this to the spectator just by taking a look at some of these cards. For example, picture cards are a good illustration of this. You can see that the ink is absolutely permanent. No matter how much you rub that, you're not going to change that card. And you can let the spectator take a look at that. Uh, black cards and red cards are the same again. You can rub that and it's not going to change. That ink is special and it's permanent. Uh, picture cards are the same as just normal cards like this. Again, give that to the spectator, let them give that a rub. But what they'll see is that these cards just aren't going to change. And no matter what the card, they're all the same. So that's the reason why it's so difficult to cheat. Except, of course, there is a special card which has special magical powers. And we've got that special card in an envelope over here. And the reason it's in an envelope over here is because we need to keep it separate from the deck because of its special powers. And this deck, well, this card is the Ace of Diamonds. Now you notice about the Ace of Diamonds, it's red on the front, but it's also red on the back. And you can let the spectator have a look at this once again. That ink doesn't change, but it does have a special unseen power. We can take the Ace of diamonds, and we can just place that in the deck at any random position, like so. We can then even give the deck a cut so that ace is lost in the deck. Now, we're gonna take a look at what happens if we just take our hand and just cast a shadow over the deck like so. You might even ask the spectator to give a click or some sort of magical gesture. We can then take a look at what happens just by spreading the cards and finding that Ace of Diamonds. Ask the spectator to take a look at the Ace of Diamonds and ask what they notice. They probably won't actually notice anything different. And that's because on the face of it, nothing has changed. But actually the magic has taken place on the other side. Ask the spectator to recall what color the Ace of Diamonds was on the other side. They recall it was red or somehow magically that's now turned to blue. Ask the spectator now to recall what color the deck was. Did we examine the cards with at the beginning? They'll say blue. You can now show the spectator how all of those cards have somehow magically turned to red. The deck has turned from blue to red. The magical ace of diamonds has turned from red to blue. And that's the real reason 
why it's so hard to cheat at cards, because you never can be quite sure what deck you're playing with. This is a really neat and simple to perform color changing effect. It always gets a great reaction and it really is as straightforward as it gets. So stay tuned because now I will show you exactly how it works. Okay, so now for the secret to this intriguing little color changing mystery. Now you may have seen color changing deck tricks before and some of them can be quite complicated and there's lots of moves to remember. The brilliant thing about this routine is that it really is super, super simple. It's essentially self-working with just a little bit of setup at the start and this is exactly how it works. So you're gonna start off with a red deck of cards. It's just a standard red deck of cards and you're also going to take two identical cards. I use the Ace of Diamonds, but you can choose to use whatever cards that you like. You're going to take a blue Ace of Diamonds and place that on top of your red deck, and then take this deck and just place it into a blue card box. So you now have a red deck in the blue card box with the blue Ace of Diamonds on top. You're then going to take your red ace of diamonds and you're going to place that in an envelope just to the side now you don't need to use an envelope you could actually just start off with the card on the side like that but i think hiding the color of the card just makes it a bit more unpredictable about what's going to happen it just adds an extra sense of mystery and also the whole storyline about needing to shield this card from the deck just adds to the theatrical effect a little bit so Ace of diamonds over there from the red deck, Ace of diamonds from the blue deck on top of your red deck here inside a blue box. Start off just by taking the deck out of the box. Now be careful as you take the cards out that you're not flashing the red cards. So that's why generally it's safer I think just to take them out face first like so. That then gives you an opportunity just to square them and then turn them over and place them down next to the blue box just to reinforce the fact that this really is a blue deck of cards. You're not mentioning it specifically, but the blue deck and the blue box is a really powerful image. You now go into a storyline. You can make your own storyline up, but I use a storyline around why it's so difficult to cheat at cards, and that's because the cards are so difficult to change, and that's because of the ink they're printed with. So you take your face down deck, turn it around. Again, be careful not to flash any of the red cards, but turn it around. The spectator really truly believes this is a blue deck. And now you're just gonna take some cards off into small chunks. And whenever you feel like it, you're just going to point to a card with this hand. And in the act of pointing, you turn this deck over here. And again, you're not explicitly calling attention to the fact that these are blue, but the act of pointing and flashing these cards is just subtly emphasizing to the spectator that this really is actually a blue deck. And you can point and you can just make a story up about how the ink is difficult to change. And you can just deal some more small packets off. And at regular intervals, again, just point to the cards, maybe offer them to the spectator, ask them just to test the cards, like say, whatever you want to do, just all you're basically doing is just reinforcing the fact that this is a blue deck, just with this pointing motion, which flashes the blue cards here. Now, I think this is quite nice because it's subtle, but it's really clear. What you're not doing is making a really big statement about all of these definitely being blue cards. It's just a really simple way of showing some different cards, pointing to them, checking them like so, and at the same time, just really sort of reinforcing subtly that these are all blue cards. Once you've pointed out enough cards and you've emphasized the points around the ink, just take the cards back, this pack here, place these on top of the pack in the hand. And then once again, you're just going to turn these over and place them next to the blue box. We now introduce our envelope over here. And this is where we remove our single ace Remove the ace like so, face up so that they don't yet see the red on the back. 
and just make up a story here about why this is a special card. And as part of that story, point out that it's red on the back as well as red on the front. And this is the first time really that we're calling attention to, explicitly anyway, calling attention to the color of the back of the card. So point out, have them note that it's red on the front, but it's also red on the back. And it's gonna be important for them to remember that. Now we're gonna take the red ace, hold in the deck firm over here. Again, remember, you don't want to flash the red cards, but we still have our blue ace on top. I'm going to take the red ace of diamonds over here and just place that randomly in the deck, wherever you like, maybe halfway, two thirds down. But this is a really powerful visualization now. So leave this just to sink in for a couple of seconds or so. The distinct difference between the red card here that they know to be the ace of diamonds going into what they believe to be clearly a blue deck. Once that's into the deck, just turn the deck over. And at this point, just give the deck a cut, maybe about two thirds down and then complete the cut like so. Because what we're going to do now is to spread the cards, but in a way which isn't spreading the whole deck like so. Remember, you now have two ace of diamonds in here. One of them will be up here, which is the one that you want. You don't want the one down here. So you don't want to be spreading it like this and giving them a chance to see the fact there are two ace of diamonds. You just want to spread it in a way which is gonna enable you to get to this ace of diamonds without revealing these cards down here. So do that in any way that you like, uh, but generally just a, a sort of a spread like this of the top half of the deck will be enough just to enable you to, okay, let's have a look, where's the ace? Oh, there it is, the ace of diamonds that we just placed in. Remove that like so gather up the rest of the cards. Now this ace would actually be the blue ace that you had on top of the deck to start with. So what we need to do now is just to present the ace, ask the spectator what's changed, they'll say nothing. But the magic is of course that this has changed from a red ace to the blue ace. And you can reveal that. And of course the extra kicker is that this deck here it's obviously now gone from blue to red. Like I say, a really simple but clever approach to the color changing deck effect. Don't be fooled by its simplicity. Presented smoothly, it would always get a great reaction. So practice it, give it a go, and I'm sure it will work for you. But as ever, the most important thing, have fun. And there you have it. You've just unlocked the secrets behind a captivating, color-changing card trick that's not just visually stunning, but also remarkably simple to perform. As you practice and perfect this mesmerizing trick, remember that the magic is not confined to the deck of cards. It's a gateway to building skills, confidence, and a sense of wonder. Keep practicing, keep performing, and let the magic guide other aspects of your life. Learning magic it's not just about the tricks, it's a journey that fosters creativity, resilience, and the belief that the impossible is indeed possible. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe for more magical adventures. Until next time, keep the magic alive and take care.